Welcome back. You are watching Breakfast Television. We are on the hunt for dogs in this shot. You just missed the most beautiful dog. They just got carried away by their owner. But of course, uh, the pets are in the spotlight in this conversation. We're talking about a case of monkeypox spreading from a human to a pet. You might have seen that in recent headlines. So we want to break things down. If you're worried about your pet, pay close attention. We have Dr. Rebecca Greenstein joining us now with everything that you need to know. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, the first question's uh, fairly simple, but it might not have an easy answer. And that is, can monkeypox spread to our pets? So we definitely know that monkeypox, which is a virus related to smallpox, can spread to animals. Um, in The Lancet, just last month, we reported the first uh, spread from infected people, um, a couple in France, to their four-year-old Italian greyhound. So it appears that it requires significant amount of close contact in order to spread. So shared bedding, shared fabrics, um, and that's exactly how the Italian greyhound seems to have uh, come up with the disease. Okay, what about vice versa then, pets to humans? So there is a risk from animals in general to people, but in terms of domestic animals like dogs and cats, there haven't been any documented cases yet. So the risk appears to be low, but it's not exactly zero. Okay, so now, you know, we have a lot of pet owners who are thinking, so what do we do? What can I do to protect my, say, dog or cats? Is there an easy answer to that? Well, it's really a question of learning your own medical history when you take a trip to your vet and kind of keeping an open mind here. So if you are symptomatic for monkeypox or you've been exposed to monkeypox, then it's definitely time to delegate pet care responsibilities elsewhere. Uh, make sure that you're wearing PPE, don't be sharing bedding, food, clothing uh, with your pets. And the CDC actually recommends that any pets uh, belonging to a person who's been exposed or any pets who've been exposed should actually be uh, isolated away from pets and um, people for 21 days. Which quite is, a long time. Which is quite a long time. And that's difficult, right? Because, you know, pets are, are part of our life. They're part of our family. So, but again, treat it as you would when it comes to isolation and PPE, masking and whatnot if you need to. Um, so let's talk about just worry, overall worry and concern. Do you see that with people that you speak to? Should people be concerned? I think after COVID, the idea of cross-species transmission is an important one. And thinking of your own medical history when looking at symptoms for your pet is important. If you've been exposed to monkeypox, or you have symptoms of monkeypox, and you notice that your pet has malaise, fever, lethargy, um, red eyes, oculonasal discharge, or a blister-like rash, it's important to report this to your veterinarian because it could theoretically be monkeypox. But also really important just to keep an eye on any sort of symptom, right? Because I know a lot of people will say that's probably nothing. And they, in fact, do that for themselves too, right? As, as you know, take ourselves to the GP or, or whatnot. But something very close to you because they can't advocate for themselves, right? They can't tell us something is wrong. We really need to pay close attention. So specifically to monkeypox, you, you talked about a sort of a lethargic energy. Uh, is there one sort of giveaway that is the big one where we should say we should check something out? So the blister-like rash is pretty classic, but we're not entirely sure if every animal who would contract it um, would have this symptom. So the main thing here for pet parents to keep in mind is the exposure piece. If you, as a pet parent, have been exposed, then it's theoretically possible for your pet to develop these signs. But it takes close contact. So if your pet is not well and there isn't a history of exposure, then it's probably more likely to be something else. Okay, but that's something else is also very important to keep an eye on, right? Uh, Dr. Greenstein, some important, wonderful information. You can go to rover.com if you'd like more. Thank you. Thank you.